Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with quadratic equations. So we have a word problem here. So we're told a store currently sells an eight kilogram bag of rice for $8.70. At this price, the store sells 120 bags a day. For every 15 cent decrease in price, the store will sell 10 more bags. At what price would the store make a revenue of $1,000? four hundred and four dollars so this is a revenue type of question we've gone through many kinds of these questions in previous sections so when i'm going through this i'm assuming you've gone through those examples and you're fairly familiar with how to set up the revenue function and whatnot this is a little bit different because in those previous ones we would set up a revenue function it would be a quadratic then we'd be finding at what price would we maximize the revenue we'd be finding that maximum point well in this case we're not going to be doing that we're going to be finding a point where we get a specific revenue so we're going to have to create that revenue function and then find out when does that revenue function equal this amount so it's going to be an equation to solve for and because we're dealing with equations in this section that's the way this kind of problem is structured. But if you wanna have extra practice, once we create that revenue um, function, if you wanna find the maximum of it, you can do that as well, like we did in the previous uh, examples in the previous sections, okay? So in this particular case, we're gonna be focusing more on solving the equation. So let's, um, let's start off here again creating a revenue formula. Now revenue, just in general, is what? The price per item that you're selling times the number of items that you're selling. So currently, the store is selling each bag for $8.70 and and they are selling 120 bags a day, like that. Um, now, what we want to do is create a certain function with this extra information where we're saying for every 15 cent decrease in price, the store will sell 10 more bags. So what we could do, we can introduce a variable and we'll let x equal the number of <clears throat> 15 cent decreases in price like that. So what we can say here is that, okay, we have this current price of $8.70. For every 15 cent decrease, how many of those are gonna be? So this X could be one, two, three, if the X's value is one, and we're decreasing the price by 15 cents. If it's two, then we're decreasing it by 30 cents. If it's three, decreasing it by 40 cents or 45 cents. For every one of those decrease in prices, we're gonna sell 10 more bags like that. Okay, so one more time, if X is one, that means that we're decreasing the price by 15 cents. So the new price would be $8.55. And then how many bags would we sell? Well, we would sell 10 more bags. So that would be 120 plus 10 times one, which would give us 130. Okay, so that's if we decrease the price one time. What if we decrease it two times, meaning we decrease it by 30 cents, then we would have a price of $8.40 and then we'd sell 20 more bags. So then we'd have 140 over here, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this is the general revenue function that we'd be working with in this particular case. Okay, again, if you're a little confused with how to set up this revenue um, equation from my explanation just now, make sure you go back to the previous sections and watch these kinds of revenue questions where I go into a little bit more detail with how to set these up. Okay, we've done a ton of questions with these types of um, setting up these kinds of revenue functions. Now here, again, in previous um, 
examples of what we were doing, a lot of times we were finding the maximum revenue. So we would expand this, it'd be a quadratic, then you could complete the square on it, or from here you could find the intercepts, find the middle between the intercepts, find that max point. But we're not finding a max point, we're finding when are we gonna make a revenue of $1,404. So here, and then this right side is gonna stay the same. And basically, what we gotta do is just solve this equation here. We have to solve for x. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna expand this whole side, bring this over, it's gonna end up being a quadratic equation. So expanding everything, let's do this in steps. There's some decimals here, so let's just be careful with our algebra. 870 times 120 would give us 1044. 870 times 10x would give us 87x. Negative 0.5x times 120 would give us what? Negative 18x. And then this times this would give us negative 1.5x squared. Then we got the 1,404 over here. Okay, so let's bring everything to one side. Uh, we could bring everything to the um, right. We could also take all of this and bring it to the left. And I think that's the way that I'm going to go about it just to make the leading coefficient positive. So it doesn't really matter. You could bring everything to the right, deal with a negative leading coefficient. I'm going to actually bring everything over to the left and make that leading coefficient positive. So uh, just to give myself some room here, let's do it here. So bringing this over, there's no other like terms here. So we'd have 1.5 x squared, 87 x minus 18 x, that would give us 69 x on this side, positive 69 x. So when we bring it over, it becomes negative 69 x. And then bringing this over, 1,404 minus 1,044, that would give us a uh, positive 360, okay? And that's gonna equal zero. We would end up with no other terms on that right side, okay? And now we end up with this um, quadratic equation over here to solve. Um, just let me make sure that all the signs are good. Yes, that would be positive. This was positive here, when we bring it over, it becomes negative. This was negative, it becomes positive. Okay, if you brought this over to the right side, then you'd have zero on the left side, and then all of this would be on the right side, it would just be different signs. So you have negative 1.5x squared plus 69x minus 360. Okay, but again, I just brought everything to the left in order to have a positive leading coefficient here. Now, if you remember, we've gone through how to solve these equations if you're dealing with a decimal. What I recommend doing is multiplying everything by something that's gonna get rid of the decimals. In this case, because there's only one decimal place, we can multiply everything by 10. However, I also mentioned in that video where we solved equations with fractions and decimals that sometimes you could get lucky and factor out that leading coefficient and you end up with a quadratic that only has integer coefficients. So if we do that in this case, we'd have x squared minus 69x divided by 1.5 would give us 46x. And then 360 divided by 1.5 would give us 240, like that. And so we actually end up with a nice quadratic right here with uh, integer values. There's no more decimal values remaining. However, if that wasn't gonna happen, then as I did in that video, you'd wanna multiply everything by 10, and you can still do that here. So if we multiply everything by 10, we'd end up with 15x squared minus 690x plus 3,600. And you could solve that equation. And the solutions to that equation are gonna be the same solutions to this equation. So you could still go about it that way if you want. Um, but because 
we ended up with a nice quadratic here by taking out the 1.5. Uh, I'm just going to stick to this method over here. So from here, what would happen is this actually factors smoothly into x minus 4, x minus 40. No, x minus 6, x minus 40. And that's going to equal 0 like that, right? This quadratic factors into that right there. If you want to do the work on the side, just to make sure, feel free to do so, the decomposition work. But it does factor into that. So notice that the two solutions that we get are x is 6, x is 40. And so what we want to do is make sure we take these and plug them back into the word problem to make sure that it makes sense, like we're not getting any negative prices or anything like that. And if we do plug those in, um, we wouldn't get any negative values. So if x is 6, okay, the first case, our price would be from this bracket, we plug in 6 over here, which would be 870 minus um, 0.15 times 6, which would give us 0 0.9. And then 870 minus 0 0.9 would give us 780. And then the quantity, they're not asking for the quantity, but let's just put it anyway, just to show you fully what's going on. Plugging in 6 over here, uh, we'd have 60, 120 plus 60 would give us 180. Okay, so for this case, we can have a price of 780 and then we could sell 180 bags. And if you multiply those two values here, you'd end up with that revenue amount of 1,404. So once you get your solutions, plug them back into the actual scenario to make sure everything makes sense so you can be super confident with your... Uh, solutions. So this is one case over here. So we have a price of 780. That's what they're asking for. At what price would the store make a revenue of that much at a price of 780? And then the quantity sold would be 180 bags. Now, if X is 40, this is the other case. What would the price be in this case? Plugging in 40 here, uh, 0.15 times 40 would give us what? 6, 870 minus 6 would give us a price of 270. And then plugging in 40 here, we would have a quantity of uh, 120 times 10 times 40. So this would be 400. So this would be 520. Okay, so this is another case over here. So sometimes you'll get solutions where it's going to make one of these brackets negative. So then that solution wouldn't make sense. We would just ignore that. But both of these solutions, they're actually giving us positive numbers for the price and quantity. So it does make sense. So this is another case over here where we could charge 270 per bag and then sell 520 bags. Okay, so that would be another potential solution. So there's actually two solutions to this uh, equation that we saw. Remember, there was that 1,404 at the beginning that we had. The way this looks visually, uh, if we were to graph it out, we would have a revenue over here, and then we'd have x over here. Remember, it would end up being something like this. And where the solutions are coming from, the two solutions is, okay, here's the maximum revenue. We don't know what that would be. That's not what we were solving for in this uh, question. But if we had like a revenue of 1,404, we can get that revenue either here or it would be over here. Okay, so it would be either at an X value of 6 or at an X value of 40. This revenue, we would hit at either of those points over here. Because remember, this is going to be a quadratic that opens down. So that's how visually it looks like in case you're wondering how we're getting these two solutions.
Okay, sometimes there will only be one solution. So like if we picked a lower revenue and it was a revenue like down here, notice we'd only have one solution over here. So sometimes you may only get one solution, right? The other solution would be negative, a negative X value, and we would just be ignoring that. Okay, but in this particular case, there are two prices that we could charge in order to get that revenue.